So in order to learn more about SQL, we are going to focus on a database for a company called ZMAC. OK, so this is a fictional corporation and we are going to focus on the database structure for ZMAC Corporation so that we can go ahead and start writing some queries and learn about SQL. So before we start doing that, we need to have a basic understanding of this ZMAC Corporation because that is a very important aspect. Again, I always try to re-emphasize that when we are working in databases, it's very important for us to work closely with the business users um, because we need to understand what is this business about and that's going that's how it's going to help us to write these queries so that we can pull out the um, meaningful um, reports and provide it to managers so we are going to um, work on running the scripts for creating the database for zmac corporation it's a multinational company um, it produces a variety of bakery items. Um, I mean, we all love bakery. Um, and they obtain products from different suppliers. Um, customers are purchasing products via orders, and an order can include many products. So this is an important detail for us to understand because this is some of the rules or the business structure that's going to help us think about what might be some themes that this ZMAC would need to keep track of. So we are going to focus on the following themes. Again, when you're designing a database, you need to narrow it down to what is it that we need to keep track of for this business to have their business transactions run smoothly. So we're going to need to keep track of the customers, which are who are all the customers that are purchasing our products. We need to know information and data about the customers. Also the products that we have, what are the different bakery items that we are going to supply or provide to our customers? We need to know um, data about our suppliers. Again, the suppliers are, the, um, are whom we receive our raw products from, and then we are going to um, sell those products to our customers, but the suppliers play an important role in ensuring that we are getting our products and making it ready. Orders is when a customer places an order and we also need to, because a customer can make many orders and you can have many items in an order. So we need to also keep track of the items that we have in an order. So this is how we start thinking. So when you're trying to think about um, the themes that you need to create for a specific database environment, we have to think about what are the things that is needed or important for this business to keep going. So then we're going to narrow down the tables. And of course, in relational databases, we give the tables names that are closely related to what we're keeping track of. So in this case, we're going to have table called customer, a product table, a supplier table, an orders table, and an order item table. So this is the schema for the database. I mean, it shows us which tables are related to each other. At this point, um, you don't need to worry about the meaning of these symbols here at the very end of the relationship. Uh, but we need to just have a basic understanding of which of the tables are related to each other. Because as we progress with writing SQL queries, we might need to pull data from two tables together. At that point, we need to know which are the tables that are related together. So as we can see here, we have a customer table and that's related to our orders table. If you look closely, you're going to see all the fields that are present in the customer table. And then you have the orders table, and I'm just going to make this bigger. So we have the orders table, and this is all the items we are keeping track of. The orders is related to the order item table, and these are all the attributes there. And then we have the order item that's related to the product table. And these are all the attributes that we have in the product table. And then we have the supplier table that is related to the product table. So we will learn later on in data modeling how we can relate tables together. But at this point, what you need to know is these are the names of the tables. These are the attributes that the table is keeping track of as well as which tables are related to each other. And then when we closely look at the fields, we can know which table has the foreign key. That is also important to keep in mind. So for example, when we look at customer and order, we can say that order table has the foreign key because it has customer ID in here. So that is an important thing for us to keep in mind. And we will learn a little bit further 
um, and on how we might we might find this useful. As well as when you look at every table, you're going to see a yellow exclamation next to the primary key. All the tables in a relational database need to have a primary key. Um, and in this case, for customer, we have customer ID. For orders, we have order ID. For order item, we have order item ID. For product, we have product ID. And for supplier, we have supplier ID. So again, I've separately just listed out every table with the foreign key. So these are the three tables that have foreign keys in them. Customer ID is a foreign key in the orders table. You have supplier ID as a foreign key in the product table. And in the order item table, we have two separate sets of foreign keys. One is product ID and the other is order ID. So just keep that in the background. And um, there are referential integrity. So again, a refresher. Referential integrity ensures that when we are relating two tables together, the foreign key value has a matching value to the primary key of the other table that it's related to. So keep that in mind. So example, customer ID in the order table must have a va matching value to customer ID in the customer table. So when we write the SQL scripts to define and create our tables, we are also essentially, when we define a foreign key, we are also going to set these referential integrity constraints in there so that we can ensure that we have a database that gives quality data for us. So moving on, I've given you screenshots of each of the table structures so that we have an understanding because in the screenshot, it might not have been that clear, but if you look carefully here, you can see the customer table. These are all the attributes. For every attribute, it's important that we define a data type, and this is the data type definition. So take time to go over the order table as well as the supplier table, um, the product table and the order item table. Remember, I am also uploading the PowerPoint version of this so that you can look into it. But it's important for us to learn our table so that we have an understanding of what are the attributes that we are going to keep track of. So as we are going to learn about SQL, we will be using the ZMAC database for writing our practice queries. And it's important for us to know which are the tables, what are these attributes so that we know which tables we have to go to to pull this data out from.